Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, midday in Australia and 1am in the UK. I hope all you guys are well and had a good weekend and good to see you Angel. How's things? Hope you had a good weekend as well. I saw your um, render in the Phil Does 3D Discord. It's looking very nice, that lock. So nice work and uh, good to see you. Alrighty, so we are going to be working on our Art Deco building in this final week before I go on break. Um, in the Unreal Engine 4.18.1, uh, I will update to point 0.2 between now and when I get back. It's 2 in Madrid, Spain, Angel. Wow. <laughs> Is that 2 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon? I'm assuming you mean two in the morning, maybe. Yeah. If it's two in the morning, it's incredibly early for you, or late for you, I should say. Uh, I appreciate you being here and watching the stream. Um, I, I know it's uh, difficult for some of you guys in Europe and around the world because I work on US time, so I, I stream my times to be convenient for US viewers, really. Um, but I know that there's a lot of guys in Europe and other places that watch me as well, and I appreciate that very much. You're working tonight, Angel. Okay, cool. So you're watching me at work. <laughs> Cheeky. Uh, well, it's good, good good, to see you and uh, good to have you here. Uh, Angel says a little pause to look at your work live. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> well, let's have a look at my work then, shall we? You guys that uh, want to see what we've been up to and what we're doing. Uh, we're working on our Art Deco building. Uh, last week's stream, we were working on this uh, little room here, which is below the stairwell. Um, we've only got a couple of pieces left to, to finish up this room. Uh, a little sideboard over here. Hey, Sniper Echo, good to see you. How was your weekend, buddy? I'm very well, yes. Looking forward to taking a break from um, work and going up to see my sister and brother. It's always fun to catch up with family. Um, but I hope you had a good weekend. Actually, I spent the weekend finishing some Christmas shopping, working on my itinerary and organising all of my flights to go up to Queensland and uh, watching, catching up on a series called Fear the Walking Dead. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. There's a show, a show called The Walking Dead. They did a spin-off called Fear the Walking Dead, which is set in Mexico, I think, in the US, around those parts. Um, and I'd missed half the season, so I spent the weekend catching up with the other half of that season. So I had a marathon of Fear the Walking Dead. Hey Legmog, good to see you buddy, how are you? I hope you had a good weekend as well Legmog. I hope all you guys had a wonderful weekend. Uh, yes, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to just finish this little room up here below the stairwell. Um, is that only a couple of things I need to do? Bring in a sideboard, maybe pop a couple more plants in here so that, and then we can call this little room here pretty much done. Uh, just let me turn off um, the planar reflections because they really cause performance here. So where are we? There we go. I'm just going to uh, disable them temporarily. They'll be on press cinematic. Uh, now. When Galen popped into the stream last week, we were talking about lighting and he was saying to me, oh, are my lights gas? And uh, they're not, they're meant to be electric. Uh, I don't know if he was asking because we're using candles, candles as well, candelabras. Uh, that's really more just to add a bit of um, mood to the building, the candles. Uh, but then I realized, well, if I have electricity, electric light here, I don't actually have any electricity coming into the building. So we're gonna fix that up as well today. So the plan of action for now is we're gonna finish this little room and then I'm going to bring power to the building from outside. Uh, just to make it a bit more believable. Uh, he got my OCD going when he mentioned it, so. Uh, and I also thought it would be nice if we added some external lighting, some garden lighting, so that's what we're gonna be doing. <laughs> Let there be power, that's right, Sniper Echo. Uh, and he made a good point, and it's something I didn't even actually think about when I was designing the building. Uh, the fact that, that we're using electric lights, yet there's no power coming into the building. Uh, which will be noticeable when we fly through our cinematic to get, before we enter the building, so. Um, uh, so Legmog says, um, I've never experienced Fear the Walking Dead on TV, thought I certainly, though I certainly 
fear the walking dead when it comes to doing Christmas shopping at your local mall. I know how that feels. I know that feeling. I was doing Christmas shopping last weekend and finishing some stuff up this weekend. So I know where you're coming from. Uh, I'm glad I, I do most of my shopping online. I mean, that's why I love the internet because I order it online and it gets delivered to my door and I don't have to worry about it. Um, but you guys know my internet was down. It, you know, it came back today. Of all the all days, about a half an hour before the stream, the second internet connection came back online. So I was at, without uh, the second line for three weeks. So I couldn't really do my online shopping properly. So I had to actually venture into the, the, the shopping malls to uh, to do Christmas shopping. And that was not fun. Uh, Snipe is saying this means you need, you're need you going to set up a power plant or just add generators outside. No, I'm going to bring in a power line. I'm going to bring in a um, a power pole and uh, hook up a, uh, the uh, electrical bit to the side of the house at the top where the power line actually attaches to the house. We're going to cheat a little bit. You'll see what I mean. I'm only going to bring in one power pole, but we're going to hide it by sending off the electricity wires into the forest so people won't really know that there's only one power pole. That's what we're going to do. Uh, and then I can bring in um, garden lighting for outside because I think some, some lighting outside in the garden would look nice as well. Again, until um, Galen mentioned it, it was something I hadn't really thought about. So. <laughs> my bad. Uh, in my line of work, I don't normally model those sort of things. It, like the Archbiz Studio, we... <laughs> my part in working for the Archbiz Studio, I don't generally model power poles and stuff. But I did create one over the weekend and we, we're going to use that. I've already brought it into Unreal so we can just place it and start um, getting it looking pretty. You're going to experience that tomorrow, Sniper Echo. Good luck. Oh man, Christmas shopping and all those crowds. Wow. Uh, Legmog saying hands up if anybody in chat's ever left Christmas shopping till Christmas Eve. I've done it before. I was determined not to do it this year because I really wanted the um, I didn't want that mad rush that you get if you leave it till the last minute. I'm just jumping around here, but just for Angel's benefit, because Angel's at work watching my stream. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Uh, and uh, he doesn't get to pop in all the time, so I'm just going to pan around the building while I chat to you guys so he can see what we've been up to. Uh, Legmog says, just say the owner of the house is a mad scientist uh, who powers the house via a human centipede on a treadmill. <laughs> that he's got locked in the basement. Actually, we didn't model the basement. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. Don't get my OCD going, guys. Don't do it. There will be no basement in this building. Um, but it would be cool. It would be cool to have a basement down here. No, no, we're not going to do it. And we're not going to do it. <sighs> I'll be here forever. Otherwise, this, this project will never be finished. Bohat, good to see you. How are you? I hope you had a good weekend as well. I uh, know I know some like I said some of you guys have seen this so far but I'm just doing this for the benefit of Angel because uh, Angel has can't pop into the stream all the time as much as I would love him to um, so I'm just going to pop on real time so we can see a couple of our candles going and he can see what we've been up to with our building interior we still have to finish this upstairs room it's not completely done yet this main sort of I don't know what you'd call it, dining room, formal room, I don't know. Uh, there's only a couple of more uh, rooms left that we have to furnish up. Um, mainly the two front hallways and downstairs near the stairwell. That's really all that's left to furnish and uh, apart from that, we um, after that all I need to do is bring in some uh, banners, some cloth physics banners and a couple of rugs for the wall that will be cloth physics as well and then we can move on to the cameras in the new year so uh, let's just pan around here so everybody can get a good look at what our building is looking like so far and again whoop, we'll move downstairs into the back section of the building uh, yeah OBS really really hates it when I turn real time on but I'm doing this just for you guys so you can see what is going on with our building. And then we have these two back sections which are furnished up, which is good. Uh, I will make some adjustments to the lighting once I've got the rest of the furniture in. We'll start making some small adjustments to get our lighting looking correct or completely correct. Uh, do remember too guys, I haven't rebuilt the lighting yet in Unreal. so. Uh, 
So these pieces of furniture and everything we're placing aren't going to look completely correct until I do a rebuild on the lighting. Uh, I'll do that after, just before I, probably just when I get back from break actually, I'll, before the next stream I'll do a rebuild on the lighting. I just want to make sure we get as much um, pieces of furniture in the building as possible before I rebuild the lighting because the last time I rebuilt the lighting it took seven hours. Now that's not, that's an exception. It normally takes about an hour. Um, but that was because I just updated from 417 to 418 and uh, Epic Games introduced a new lighting model in Unreal so it could be that it would just had to regenerate all of those light maps. Um, but so I'm not, I haven't done a rebuild on the lighting just in case it takes seven hours again. Uh, but that, like I said, is unusual. It should not take that long normally. Normally it takes about an hour to rebuild this level. Okay, so we have our building. We've just got to finish up this little room and then we can work on bringing in our power to the building. I wish you hadn't mentioned that basement leg mod. I really want to put a basement in now. That'd be so cool. Maybe we could have like a hidden door here underneath the stairwell that you can get to from the base, get down to the basement. That'd be so cool. Uh, no, no, we're not going to be doing it. We are not going to do it. I will never finish this project otherwise. A wine cellar, Bohat says, yeah, no, a wine cellar as well would look cool. It would look really cool. Um, you guys are going to stop this feature creep. You've heard of feature creep with games development. It's the same sort of thing. I get too carried away. It's never going to be done. We're going to move on to a new model. Uh, Angel says a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, uh, probably since the last time you saw it, Angel, we've got a bit more furniture in. Uh, Legmog says, uh, what about on Earth do you envisage this house being? Where, whereabouts on Earth? I've actually yeah, I've got to come up with a title for this as well. So maybe you guys can help me come up with a title for our cinematic. Um, let's just jump outside so we can get a look at the building and maybe inspire. you can get inspired as to what we can call this um, cinematic. Because I don't know. I really don't know what we're going to call it. And it has to have a title for when I create the video, the, the cinematic video, so. <laughs> and Sniper's saying a pool table. Yeah, a pool table would look cool too. We do have a couple of other rooms we've, we've got to create furniture for, so a pool table could go in one of them. It could probably even go in this upstairs room, uh, hallway, front top hallway, or it could go in one of those side rooms. There's no kitchen, Sniper Echo says. Yeah, I'm aware of that, Sniper Echo. Thank you very much for reminding me. Uh, I know there's no kitchen, but we do remember have a few rooms that uh, we aren't using in this building that I'm not intending to um, to furnish. So we've got uh, one of the rooms here on the side. Where are we? You can't see it too well because it's in shadow, but there's a room there. Uh, there's two rooms on the side here that we're not going into. And there's also a room down around the back in here. So we could say the kitchen's in there, but when we're not gonna we're not going to be furnishing it because I'm not <laughs> it'll just take too long. We're not gonna take our camera in there, we're not gonna put it in there, but we'll say that the kitchen's there. Okay? Pretend the kitchen's in behind that door. Um because I, I know when I create the cinematic I've got a, a general idea of how I'm gonna run my camera. And I never intended to bring the camera into the side rooms here, which is why we won't be furnishing them. I'm going to keep the camera mainly through the center of the building. And Sniper says, and uh, usually that front lawn would have a dog running around. <laughs> yes, a dog running around, maybe a couple of deers in the back in the backyard here, you think, you know? A couple of deer or something in this back section through the forested area would look cool running around in the background through here. We're not doing it, we're not doing it. You guys, you, you want my ICD to kick off, don't you? Uh, Bowhead says, the dog obviously fully rigged and animated with first simulation. That, well, you know, if I was gonna do it, I'd have to do it that way. Because if you're gonna do anything, you gotta do it properly. So yep, fully rigged, fur animated, but we're not putting a dog in. And I'd actually probably put a cat in, just because I like cats. But we're not doing that either. Uh, at least, Sniper like says. And so, yes, no, I do have to try and try and constrain myself here. I really do. I'm just making sure they're turned off. Yep. So we do have to come up with a title for this, though, and I really am stumped as to what we're going to call it. Uh, Legmog says that looks colonial. It's actually supposed to be Art Deco. It's, it's a deco building. 
uh, either French origin or New Orleans, Bayou region or British colonial Caribbean, Jamaica. Yeah, it is, it is actually supposed to be a deco building though, an art deco style building. Uh, these sort of geometric shapes are very deco. But you're right, it could be anything really. It's buildings are buildings, you, people see what they see in them. Uh, it, it may be a little bit decorative here with all of this um, stonework to be traditional deco. Deco is usually a lot plainer. But anyway, but we do have to come up with a title. So between now and when I come back and we start setting up our cameras for our cinematic, we have to decide what we're going to be calling the cinematic. Um, because remember, we're going to start our cinematic down the garden path, as they say, which is down here. So yeah, we do. We need to come up with uh, an interesting title for our cinematic. Uh, we'll start our camera here at the main gate. Alrighty, let's jump back to the building. Back, 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 back. Back, 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 back. Actually, some some garden furniture on this um, terrace would look really cool. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted now. Actually, I might do that. Uh, we'll, we'll revisit the outside, though, uh, after we've finished the interior. Uh, but just maybe a couple of stone seat, seats along either side here will look cool. And I actually do already have one created, so it shouldn't take me long to bring it in. It's one that's actually in my 3D store, so I might bring that in, I think. So it would look cool, one on either side here. But again, we'll revisit that when I come to just do a final pass over the environment, because I do want to um, just make this pond area look a little bit prettier as well. Nothing major, I'm just gonna add a few more um, lilies in the pond and some floating leaves here and there. Uh, but yep, yeah, we'll concentrate on the interior because that's what we've been doing. <laughs> And we're going to look at this room here because, like I said, I just want to get this little side room done. And then we can look at bringing power to the building. Uh, let's jump into Max and bring in this little uh, sideboard here that I'm going to texture up now in Substance Painter. But before I do that, let's assign our material IDs. Again, I'm just making sure I'm not muted and all that's good to go. Uh, I think three materials for this will be fine. We'll do a cherry wood a brass for the handles and uh, a gold, met metallic gold for the uh, decorative work. Uh, we'll call this one A and T for antique, C, A, B for cabinet and drawer. Underscore cherry for cherry wood. And we'll just make it a red color. You really don't even need to color these. I just do this to get me organized when I'm assigning it to the model. It helps me to visualize what it's going to look like if I assign a, a color to it before I export it into Substance Painter. Uh, Legmog says, oh well, to ramp the ACD up, the precise tone of red on the building bricks is clearly Saharan Sands red, uh, which is not widely adopted by Western architects until the past deco period. And the outside garden tiles are of the Spanish Moorish design. <laughs> you nuts, dude. Uh, <laughs> don't do this to me, guys. You know I do. I, this I, I, OCD is bad. The OCD is strong in this one, trust me. So <laughs> don't set me off. <laughs> okay, let's call this one. Um, uh, we'll call this one handles. They will be the handles. And we'll make that one a nice bright yellow. And we'll call this one uh, Deco, for the decoration. And we'll make this one, uh, we'll just make it a blue just to differentiate it amongst everything. It won't be blue, but you know, you know what I mean, guys. Uh, again, I've already taken this into Unfold 3D to uh, UV map it. So I prepared ahead of time. That's very strange. I might have some inverted normals here. I might have to check that. Uh, I might have some flip polys, I mean to say. Uh, this one's going to be the blue. And then the handles are going to be the brass. 
Uh, just before I take this in, I am going to... It, it could just be shading in Max that's doing it. An easy way for me to find out is to select it and uh, highlight it. Let me just collapse my stack. Yeah, I, I can tell if you're a if you use Max for your 3D. It, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty much the same, uh, no matter what 3D program you use. If you highlight your object, you can generally tell through the highlight color if there's a problem. And you see how the legs are that bright red, but the body is that dark red. That tells me that the uh, the polygons are flipped on the um, actual body of the cabinet. <laughs> so for us to fix that should be pretty simple. All I have to do is deselect the legs because they're fine. And the part that's selected is uh, inverted, so I just need to flip them. And now we have everything back to that bright red, so we know it's good to go. Sniper Echo says, I'm using Max as we speak. Are you Sniper Echo? You've gone off of Blender. Sacrilege. Uh, no. Blender's great. Max is great. Maya's great. Cinema 4D is great. It's all great. Every 3D program is good now. You guys must be sick of me saying it because you know it's tr it is true. It, they're all great now. Uh, Legmog says uh, I might have been making all that up, but I won't ever verify whether I did or not. To fester a niggling sense of doubt in Phil's mind, and then he'll be up all night deeply researching Sahara sand bricks and Moorish garden tiles. <laughs> you are you are, oh cheeky Legmog, cheeky cheeky, all of you cheeky. Anyway, let's attach all these pieces together so we can bring it into Substance Painter and get some texturing going. That's all good. Now I am going to make sure my pivot is in the middle and I'm actually going to move my pivot down to the base because I, when I place it, it'll make it easier for me in Unreal. And I'm going to make sure I do a reset on the X form and collapse my stack. Uh, let's export this now. We'll call this one ANT for antique uh, chest drawers. There we go. That'll that'll do. Antique chest drawers. Uh, now we need to put this in the right folder. It's this one here. You're so cheeky, Legmog. Have you been streaming recently, Legmog? I like to ask you guys, you know that I like to support everybody that streams on Twitch and does 3D. So whether that be Galen, who is a streamer who uses uh, Blender, or Legmog, who uses Cinema 4D, or Kiori, who uses 3D Studio Max. Uh, why are you using Max, um, Sniper Echo? Legmog says, if by Phil's next stream, he says, okay, guys, I've deleted the whole project and I'm starting from scratch. Only this time I've spent thousands on on um, bachelor's degree course in the history of architecture to make sure that I'm doing it right. No, 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 I'm not going to go that far. Man, college was uh, annoying enough when I did it. I'm not going back to do it again. <laughs> not for anybody. I'm not that OCD. Uh, it, it, yeah, no, that, that, that won't be happening. I spent uh, three, four years at uni and that was enough. Let's select that model we just exported. Uh, da, 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 da. Interior furniture, I think it is. Uh, antique side table, antique chest drawers. Got to make sure we turn compute tangent space on and we'll set it at 2K. <laughs> Legmog is saying, we'll see, Phil, we'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah, but why are you using Max Sniper Echo? I'm curious now. More than anything, I just want to, I'm just curious as to why you're using Max and not Blender. Let's bake all of our texture sets using, oh, hang on, let me just abort that. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I turn on use low poly mesh for high poly mesh. Now we can bake them all. 
Yeah, I'm just curious as to why you're using Max um, Sniper Echo. Not that there's anything against that. I mean, you know, Max is my little baby. I love Max. Uh, Legmark says, yes, I was streaming for a few hours ago. A few hours ago. Okay, cool. Doing a bit of tutorial stream for Sniper, who'd asked about how to animate a wall, a wall going from clean to eroded. Oh, okay, cool. Sounds like fun. Uh, you, you, you actually doing an animation on the um, mesh or you're doing an animation through a material? Either way is valid or both. Okay. Let's start texturing this little beastie up. Uh, we'll start with the cherry wood. Uh, Angel, I am using ID maps, yes. That is why I assigned these plain colors to uh, the model inside of Max. They, all, all the material is is a plain color with a different name and that allows me to then bring it into Substance Painter and Substance is sort of reading each texture as a different material ID. Um, so yeah, basically material IDs to, to get the textures in on their own layer inside a substance which then makes it much easier for me to texture up uh, an object that's quite detailed like this chest of drawers, uh, this sideboard. So yep. Uh, Sniper says I'm using Max to try to figure out how to do erosion on a wall mesh. Oh, okay. And you saw a guy showing it open Max in Cinema 4D. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, I know Sniper Girl was talking, she's doing a, a piece, uh, an environment piece, I think in Unreal for her portfolio when she wants to do erosion on the uh, landscape. She's doing it through the material, which is a great way to do it, through the shader in Unreal. Alright, so yes, uh, I've separated it up into separate layers so it's easy for us to texture. Uh, like I said, it's, it is going to increase the draw call by an extra three instead of one by having three different textures instead of one, but I'm doing a cinematic, so I'm not so worried about performance. I mean, I, I still, I'm worried about it. I don't want to crawl my machine, but less worried about it than if I was making a game. But I've shown you guys how you can condense these back down again in your 3D program. So you get you back to one draw call. Legmog says, well, part of my tutorial as such was trying to explain the philosophy between creating displacement via material and displacement via actually directly on the mesh, as you see in the viewport. Uh -huh. Cool. Well, either way is fine. One will be a bit more performance heavy than the other, but both ways will work. <laughs> All right, let's start texturing this up. And I think we'll start with the cherry wood so I'm going to grab that and pull it in. Uh, we'll worry that. We will rotate it by 90 degrees. And I'm going to pull back on the uh, height information because by default, it always brings it into uh, with too much height information in Substance Painter. You will notice that this chest of drawers does not have inside polygons and that's so that uh, again just for, for, bleh, for performance reasons uh, to reduce the poly count I removed the polygons from the inside of uh, furniture which you're never going to see in there. Uh, Angel says but you don't have a little problem on, on the hard edges but I, I, I'm not sure why. <laughs> hey knacker bags good to see you. Um, we are doing a cinematic in Unreal 4.18. I use Max to do my modeling. We're using Unreal to create the cinematic. And I'm using Substance Painter to do the texturing. That's the software we're using. That's a project we're working on at the moment. Uh, Angel says, when I make UV maps, I have this little problem with hard edges. What, what are the problem you have with hard edges, uh, Angel? <laughs> Knacker bags. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you very much, Knackerbags. I'm, I'm glad you like it. I like your username too. It's very clever. Very memorable. Um, I'm just trying to work out what uh, Angel's problem is here. You don't, don't have a, pro a little hard... He's having a problem with hard edges with his UV maps. When you say hard edges, what do you mean, uh, Angel? 
if we look at my model here and you try and describe to me, you're, you're talking about you're getting a problem with the hard edges here. I'm just trying to work out what problem you're getting. Uh, Legmog says, in the end, my procedural erosion material was so detailed I tried to make it so the detail was directly on the mesh, as seen in the viewport. You had to ramp up the subdivisions on the mesh to nearly 5 million polygons for it to even come close. Well, uh, I know that Max can handle huge amounts of polys. Actually, I, I recall seeing a, um, uh, a post on Twitter from you, Sniper Echo. I meant to reply, but I was in the middle of doing something else at the time. You were saying that you were having problems with um, 3 million poly mesh in Max. And that's unusual. I've taken 10 million poly meshes into Max, and uh, albeit with the latest version of Max, and not had a problem. Um, since Autodesk updated Max's interface to Nitrous, uh, it's it can generally handle millions of polygons without a problem. So basically, anything from Max 2014 and up, or well, say 2015 and up, you should be fine. So 2015, 2016, 2017, or this one, which is 2018. Um, I've not had a problem with throwing millions of polys around because I take stuff between Max and ZBrush quite a bit. If you can, guys can see that up there. I've got Goz uh, installed for ZBrush. Uh, Angel says, when I look the texture maps after you paint in substance, I know that's fine, Angel, that's fine. I get the gist of what you're saying. It's cool. Again, if you guys are not, if English is not your first language, that's not a problem. Um, if there's anything you don't understand that I'm doing, feel free to pop into chat and ask me to explain again. I'm happy to do that. That's why I'm on Twitch. So if English isn't your first language, that is not a problem. Just take your time. If you don't understand something I say, then ask me in chat and I'll try and explain it better. Uh, but Angel is saying when he looks at the texture maps uh, after you paint them in substance, you are getting... Uh, I'm trying to understand what the problem is though, Angel. You're saying you have a problem on the hard edges. What is the problem in uh, that you're seeing? Uh, um, yeah, I'm trying to work out what the problem is. You, you, you're talking about hard edges, but I, so are you getting a seam or, or, or what's the problem there? Yeah, I'm trying to work. I, I understand what you, you're talking about the texture maps, but are you getting like you're seeing a seam or something? That's what I'm trying to, to find out. Uh, Sniper says I have a seven million poly mesh in Blender without any issues, but Max kept crashing on you. Mm, it's unusual. Shouldn't Max has been fine for me. Uh, do make sure if you're using Max that you have set up your customize. You, you go into customize and make sure in your preferences uh, that you have set the right. Um, where is it? Where is it? Don't do this to me, Max. Because I don't go in here. I only go in. Oh, here we go. Make sure you're using the right driver here. So you want the nitrous one. I know you've got a 1070 uh, Sniper Echo, so make sure you're using the nitrous Direct 3D 11 um, driver and not something else. If you're trying to do it in software mode, which is also available, that, that you probably won't be able to handle that many polys. That's the only thing I could think of that could cause Max to be, could, could cause possibly a problem. Because uh, I don't have a problem with millions of polys. And you guys know I do photogrammetry. And when you do photogrammetry, it always makes models that are in tens of millions of polygons. And I always bring them into Max and I've not had a problem. Uh, Smoker Barbecue, good to see you. Hope you had a good weekend. You're braving the cold there over on the um, north, south, east coast. <laughs> Uh, it's so hot here at the moment, guys. I think today's 37, 38 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty warm in Melbourne. So I'm incredibly jealous of the cold weather you guys have in the US now. Uh, what's the question, Sniper? Sniper says, try planar mapping. Are you referring to perhaps um, Angel's problem? Legmog says, the main problem with hard edges is they're toxic masculine. <laughs> You're silly, Legmog. Funny, but silly. Um, Murphy says, let's see if I can stream and encode video at the same time. Well, we do have transcoding. I did check before the stream. You guys know I don't, I don't monitor my stream while I stream, but I do check it as I, when I first start streaming every time to make sure I am streaming and it's going live to Twitch. 
I, I close it down once I'm uh, once I'm happy. It's all, it's all good. Um, but I did notice we did have transcoding, so you can knock me back if um, that goes for anyone. If my bandwidth is too much for you, knock me back by hitting that little cog wheel icon at the bottom of the video player, and you can knock me back all the way from 1080p back to I don't know, I think it's 160p, which will be horrible to watch. I don't advise you do it, but uh, you can if you need to. Um, ooh, I'm just catching up here. Uh, yes, be, be careful if you're posting links in in, um, in Twitch chat unless you're a subscriber because the night bot is a naughty bot and he will uh, purge your message and if you keep doing it, he will ban you. For, he'll time you out. He won't ban you. He will time you out. So be careful of that. But remember, if you want to post a link, post it in uh, Discord here. Um, I'm just trying to catch up with what's going on in Discord here. I'm seeing a new message. No? Okay. Knack of bags, thank you for the follow, that's what it was. Thank you very much for following my Twitch channel. I do appreciate it, guys, when you follow me on Twitch. Um, so thank you very much, Knack of bags. Uh, do remember too, you can follow me on Twitter at PhilDoes3D. If you want a reminder when I'm live, but my schedule doesn't change every Monday, Tuesday, uh, usually a Wednesday. We will go back to Wednesdays, I promise, guys, uh, next year at some stage. Uh, but definitely Monday and Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. You can get a, the countdown is below my stream on Twitch here in my panels when I, my next stream will be, which will be tomorrow. I do remember too, you can join the Phil Does 3D Discord by typing exclamation Discord in Twitch chat. That'll give you an invite link to join the Discord server. If you're one of those people that likes to use the Twitch desktop app, we have a Phil Does 3D server on that as well. Just type exclamation server to get an invite link to that one. Uh, generally people prefer Discord though, and I have to admit, I like the Discord app. I think it's nice and clean and yeah, so but we've got Phil Does 3D servers on both. So take your pick, join them both, whatever. <laughs> so you can post links in Discord or on the Twitch desktop app if you're not a sub, but if you're a, if, um, and if you're a sub, you can as well, but you can't post links in Twitch chat unless you are a sub. I have a feeling Smurfberry, you can though, even though you're not a sub, simply because you were one of the original people that started watching me on Twitch uh, over 12 months ago. So. Uh, for, for the handful of people that were my regulars prior to me getting a subscription, getting affiliation, uh, I've given you guys the, the ability to post links, but no one else, so you have to be a sub to do it now. Just to make you feel a bit extra special there, Smith Berry. Um, Bohat says, Sniper, you can increase how much uh, memory Max can use, I believe. Maybe yours is too low. That's a good point. Legacy Smurfberry says, I had to walk through snow, but I'd love to walk through snow. I want to throw myself in the snow and make those snow angels. That's what I want to do. Actually, the last time I went to the snow, because we do have snow in Australia, despite what you might think. Um, we do get snow here, up in the mountains. The last time I went skiing, uh, I lost my really expensive sunglasses because my face went so numb from people throwing snow at me. I didn't notice when they'd fallen off my face. It wasn't until I was halfway home in the car, I realised I didn't have my sunglasses on. Um, uh, Sniper is talking to Bohat. Yeah, sometimes if you split the mesh it could work, but generally I haven't had a problem, uh, Sniper, with um, high poly meshes and max. Six minutes left on the handbraking code, Smurf, very cool. Handbrake's pretty cool for, for doing video stuff. Snowberry says 99% CPU U utilization. Well, that's good because it means it, at least you know it's uh, using your CPU to the max to get it done as quickly as possible. I, I, I never like it when I see a program not using my full CPU when it should be. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's, uh, what's her name? Uh, that cook that went to jail. What was her name? Oh, blonde, old. I shouldn't say these things. Oh, Martha Stewart. It's a good thing, yes. I'm not degrading Martha Stewart. I think she's a lovely lady. Uh, it just reminded me of what she used to say. It's going just fine. Good to hear. Smurfberry Legmog says, okay. Uh, <laughs> Legmog says, oh God, snow angels. My head did, uh, did that in the garden once. 
uh, only unknown to him, uh, you're only uh, unknown to him, he did it in the area where his dog did a poo. Big brown smear on the angel wing. Ooh, yuck. But being in the snow, it would have been quite hard, I would have thought. Frozen. Frozen poo. Frozen dog duty. <laughs> Not nice. It is insulting. I agree, Leg Mog. I used to be blonde myself. Uh, I, I call myself uh, Mousy Brown now, but when I was a young child, I was that platinum blonde colour. It just got darker as I got older. My brother uh, still has that platinum blonde coloured hair. Uh, my sister, on the other hand, has black hair. So we've got a mixture of everything in our family. Really platinum blonde, mousy brown, which is me, and then uh, really dark, which is my sister. And you'll notice I'm quite pale, but my sister has really olive skin. So and despite what you're about to, th what you're thinking, we get, all come from the same father and the same mother. I can assure you. Uh, I've got blue eyes, she has brown eyes, my brother has brown, blue eyes. 